farm's been in the family for over 150 years. So our farm was established in 1904 in the small town of Merrill, which is in the Great Lakes Bay uh, region of Michigan. This farm has been in my family since 1901. We grow only conventional corn and soybeans. So we do about half of our acres, about 550 acres of corn and 550 acres of soybeans. And we rotate each year because we think that's better for our soil. We have been uh, growing corn, soybeans, sugar beets, and occasions black beans. Uh, the crops we raise, corn, soybeans, uh, non-GMO food grade soybeans, which are natto, and some tofu beans, and then alfalfa hay. We've always been conservation minded, I guess is, is what I would say was the foundational aspect of it. Part of that comes from having a legacy of farming in the area. Part of that comes from looking forward and saying, I want to make sure that this soil is as usable and as healthy as it possibly can be moving forward. We have started doing some cover crops. We do no-till, uh, conservation tillage, minimum tillage. It's important to our operation to implement these practices for sustainability. We're on a busy road. People are going to drive by this all summer. They're going to see this field. Uh, I'm going to want this to look as best as I can. This is my billboard. We think you can use conservation and still be very productive and very profitable. And I think those two things have to go hand in hand. When I think about precision ag and what precision ag means to me is it's that scenario of I no longer treat every field the same or every acre the same. Precision agriculture really allows me to do what's right for that acre, for that area of the field to help make it most successful. Um, and the reason I want it to be successful is because I want to be able to raise the best quality crop I can from that acre. We're not overfeeding anything. We're putting out exactly what the crop needs. To me, being the fifth generation, it's, it's about a legacy. It's about, we don't own this land. We're renting it from the next generation. I love agriculture. I love the ability to be able to grow something, you know, and for me, it's a scenario of it's a, always a practice of patience and always a practice of faith. During the summer on our farm, corn and soybeans need a lot of management. You're constantly scouting fields and making sure you're not lacking anything and that you can act on something you need to act on before it's too late. During the summer as we're out scouting in our soybeans, I mean we're looking for a, a multitude of things. I think we are a big proponent and the best way to know what's going on in your crop is to be out in your crop. Um, so we're looking for insect pressures, disease pressures, we're also taking, you know, uh, looking at, continuing to look at stand establishment. We currently use satellite imagery so that if there's any kind of issues that are developing in a field, we can see it from the satellite and then that'll direct us to that part of the field. Right now there's a lot of things to look at. I gotta check some oil levels in the head. Belt tension, this is a draper head. We're checking uh, chain tension over here, PTO, making sure everything is lubricated properly. Uh, the reason we do this is because once we get into harvest, we want to have any equipment failures. The soil sampling that we uh, uh, use prior to our fertilizer application assists us in determining the, the correct amount and what is needed on that particular field, that particular area of that field. As the fifth generation in Palmer Township, if my great-great-grandfather wouldn't have been mindful of water quality and conservation in general, I might not be farming this land today. And I hope that through my efforts, through my son's efforts, and through my dad's efforts, that uh, it might be possible for future generations to farm in this area. We think it's critical that we take a role in our community. Um, I remember hearing once that every person has a responsibility to reinvest in their industry, but I think that quote also refers to you have a responsibility to, to invest in your community. On June 7th, my dad got into an accident on the farm. He ended up breaking his pelvis and was hospitalized for five or six weeks. When you take one man out of a two-man operation, it really slows things down. Fortunately, there was a large group of help available. In our time of need, a lot of people came forward, showed their support. It was a very humbling experience for me when I actually became aware of how much help was offered and actually given. It's important to us here on the farm to be good neighbors, particularly all of our neighbors, our relatives, are our friends. I've known them for a long time. I can guarantee that every farmer that I know has a strong sense of pride 
and admiration for the land that they work. The thing I look forward to during harvest is it's the culmination of the whole year's work. Harvest is really the payday. I mean, harvest is the culmination of all of that planning. This year's harvest, I would say, is probably a little more sweet to me because I had the injury in June. This is kind of what I pointed myself to in my recovery to get here. You know, reap the harvest, essentially. You're able to go out and, uh, you know, to cut soybeans and shell corn. You're also able to um, start to figure out, hey, did I make the best decisions? Did I set this crop up for success? To see the numbers you're getting this year and just to see the crops go into the bins is, um, it's very satisfying. We began this year's harvest in the fall of 2020. When we planned ahead, we applied cover crop to our farm, uh, made plans of what crop was going to be planted on a particular piece of land. As far as uh, come harvest time, kind of all hands on deck, different roles. In a normal year, it's just me and my son, Nick. There's always some things that um, go into that. We require more people with corn than we do with beans because, of course, you're looking at significant differences in yields. Okay, when you're looking at corn, you're looking at pulling off about 200 plus bushel to the acre. When you're looking at soybeans, you're looking at about 50 or so bushel per acre. We had the opportunity to, to sight two bald eagles. Um, it's really good to see these animals, these birds in our area and to know that as a society we can work together to bring species back on the edge of extinction. I think we're moving forward and that's one of our goals in our farm, Sunrise Farm, is to practice conservation. So as far as the technology side of it in harvest, usually the combine the yield monitor for us is it. It's linked in with the planter monitor, the hybrid tracking, test plots. The, the data that you uh, glean from that is pretty valuable this time, or when harvest is over. I go through that and you evaluate whatever trials you may have done. Really what we're running this machine is we actually run two different monitors. One, um, a system that we have in there to track yield as we're going across the field. The yield monitor is also tracking, uh, doing some auto steer for us. And then the other monitor really is actually monitoring all the functionality of the machine. GPS auto steer, we can uh, set a straight line and make sure we're getting a full swath of beans each pass. When we harvest the soybeans, we collect the seed and then everything else gets either left in the field by the combine or else comes out the back of the combine. And because we have such a strong philosophy for conservation, we think that any of that organic matter that can be left behind is a bonus. I think every year harvest for all farmers, it's accumulation of long season of work and hopefully the harvest is bountiful, the weather is cooperated, and it's your one payday a year, basically.